Good afternoon. I'm Adeola Adekunle with Global News. In the news, Buari arrives London for medical checkup. Putin suspends grain export deal with Ukraine. Netanyahu eyes return to power as Israelis go to poll. This is the news. President Mohamed Buhari has arrived in London, United Kingdom, for its routine medical checkup. Buhari left Nigeria for London on Monday for medical checkup. Special advisor to the President on Digital Communications, Bashir Ahmad, wrote in a tweet that Buhari will return from his medical trip in the second week of November. APC presidential candidate Ashwa Jubala Ahmed Tinubu is expected to meet the business and organized private sector leaders in Lagos today. The meeting will afford the economic players and leaders of thought in the private sector to interact with the APC presidential candidate and interrogate his action plan for Nigeria. A statement by the Director of Media and Publicity of APC Presidential Campaign Council, Bayo Ononuga, says the interactive session with business leaders and captains of industry will hold at the Equal Hotel and Suites. The Secretary of the Campaign Council, James Faleke, said the town hall session was convened to allow Tinobu share his vision for a better Nigeria with various actors in the economy and allow for a critical examination of the policy options contained in the action plan. President Mohamed Buhari at an October the 21st unveiled Tinobu Shatima policy document christened Action Plan for a Better Nigeria. The document has enjoyed positive reviews across various segments of the economy since it was launched. Ethiopia's Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed says there is heavy foreign interference in the continuing talks between the government and Tigray administration but remains hopeful a peace pact will be reached. Mr. Abiy said Ethiopians can solve their matters despite international pressure for a ceasefire. Meanwhile, a spokeswoman for the African Union Commission chairperson, Mosa Faki Mahamad, on Monday said there was no date limitation on the talks. The negotiations, which began on October the 25th in South Africa, continued on Monday, although they were initially expected to end on Sunday. Mozambican authorities say close to 90 Islamist militants alongside their hostages have surrendered to the government over the past two months in Mosimboa da Praia in Cabo de Gado province. The province has grappled with a brutal jihadist insurgency that has created a massive humanitarian crisis in northern Mozambique. President Felipe Uyose in September announced a pardon for all surrendering jihadists during a tour to the province. Local administrator Sergio Cipriano said the militants were well received and the process of reconciliation and reintegration was underway. Since 2017, militants have carried out abductions, beheadings and the burning of homes in the province, forcing hundreds of thousands to flee for their safety. Now, President Vladimir Putin has said Russia is suspending but not ending its participation in a deal that allows safe passage to vessels carrying Ukrainian grain exports. Moscow pulled out of the UN brokered agreement on Saturday, alleging that Ukraine had used a safety corridor in the Black Sea to attack its fleet. The UN says there were no ships inside the corridor that night. Ukraine has not claimed responsibility for the attack. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said the deal would be honored and accused Russia 
of blackmailing the world with anger, a claim Russia denies. Israelis are voting in their fifth election in less than four years, with the Orkish ex-premier Benjamin Netanyahu campaigning for a comeback alongside far-right allies. The latest ballot follows the collapse of the so-called Change Coalition, which united eight disparate parties who succeeded in ousting Netanyahu last year after a record run as Prime Minister but ultimately failed to bring political stability. Israel is up until 2000 GMT to cast their ballot, after which complex beginning to build a coalition will get underway. Kataka Prime Minister Yair Lapid is seeking to hold on to power, with his centrist Yesh Atid party lagging slightly behind Netanyahu's right-wing Likud in the polls. South Korea's police chief has said their emergency response to the Taiwan crush was inadequate, the first acknowledgement from officials that they did not do enough to prevent it. Amid growing calls for accountability, Yoon In Kyun said he felt limitless responsibility about public safety over what happened and has vowed a full investigation. Interior Minister Lee Sang Mi also apologized for the incident that killed 156 people and injured 152 others. It happened on Saturday night as crowds gathered in an alley in Aitawan, a popular nightlife district in Seoul, to celebrate Halloween without restrictions for the first time since COVID. Mr. Yoon said police had received numerous calls before the accident happened alerting them to the seriousness of the situation, but their response was lacking. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi will visit Morbi district in India's western state of Gujarat, where a bridge collapse has killed more than 100 people in one of the worst accidents in years. The colonial era bridge collapsed into the Machu River on Sunday, days after it reopened following repairs. Search and rescue operations on the river resumed today. Nine people, including employees of a firm contracted to maintain the bridge, have been arrested. The 754 feet bridge on the Machu River was built during British rule in the 19th century. The bridge was a major local tourist attraction touted by the state's tourism website as an artistic and technological marvel and reopened only last week after being shut for months for repairs. The Nigerian entertainment industry scene and Nigerians in general have received the shocking news of the death of Ifani Adeleke, son of popular award-winning and global music icon Davido, and his fiancé Chioma Roland. It was gathered that the first son of the artist died on Monday at his father's residence in the Banana Island area of Lagos State. Police public relations officer in the state, Benjamin Unday, told newsmen that Ifai drowned on Monday. Unday added that no arrest yet, but Davido's domestic staff have been brought in for questioning. The PPRO said the domestic workers' narrations would assist the command in ascertaining the circumstances surrounding the death of the three-year-old boy. Meanwhile, celebrities, both at home and abroad, have taken to their social media handles to commiserate with Davido and Chioma over Ifai's death. And sports. Defender Calvin Ramsey could make his first senior appearance for Liverpool and Ibrahima Kornati may also feature against Napoli in the Champions League fix fixtures for today. Napoli top Group A on 15 points, while the Reds are also through to the last 16 with one game to spare. Rangers, on the other end, are still looking for their first point in Champions League Group A and host Ajax later tonight. Ajax's three points game came 
in a 4 win over Rangers, meaning only a victory by five goals or more will allow Van Broncos' side to finish third. Also tonight, Tottenham will just have to deal with Antonio Contes' touchline ban for the Group D decider at Marseille. The Italian was sent off after Spurs draw with Sporting Lisbon and will have to sit in the stands in France. Tottenham have never beaten a French team away from home in Europe and will arrive at the Ostai State Velodrome knowing a point will see them advance into the knockout stage. In the fixtures, Bayern Leverkusen will host Club Brugge. FC Porto will lock hands with Atletico Madrid. Bayern Munich will also entertain Inter Milan. Victoria Pleasant will slog it out with Barcelona while sporting with Retaku with Frankfurt. And now to end global news, a recap of our top stories. President Mohamed Buhari has arrived in London, United Kingdom for his routine medical checkup. We told you that President Vladimir Putin has said Russia is suspending its participation in a deal that allows safe passage to vessels carrying Ukrainian grain exports. And we also told you that ex-Premier Bayer Minatayahu is campaigning for a comeback alongside far-right allies as Israelis go to polls. That's, at about new, at about, that's Global News as edited and read by Adeola Adekunle. Thank you for listening. Good afternoon.